Hello all, uh, the practitioner here, bachelor of science student, chemistry major, mathematics minor, magician, parapsych researcher, technical skeptic, uh, technical agnostic, and Fortean skeptic. Um, um, anyway, um, I'm here to do a video on um, perhaps the biggest blunder that uh, my fellow skeptics have been working on, and this is not on parapsych or anything like fringe like that. This is right on the actual scientific issues right now. Um, Penn and Teller back in 2003 did an uh, episode of a show called, of their show Bullshit, called Environmental Hysteria. The problem is, is that the bulk of the arguments which they brought forward, unfortunately, in this case, um, are still being argued today by a large chunk of, um, of people, uh, particularly the oil industry and a few others who would, um, who don't really seem to care about, uh, global warming and the like. Now, for those of you who want an extensive argument uh, for, you know, anthropogenic exacerbation of global warming, uh, take a look at my videos, Global Warming Critical Thinking, Global Warming Critical Thinking Addendum, and Global Warming, a look at the science behind it. I've covered um, the full technicals there. A, I've given a great number of sources, um, reference to peer-reviewed literature, plenty of others. Um, again, the, there's actual hard science right now. We know, we've known back in 2003, we were still fairly certain that global warming was happening. Um, but, you know, just even by saying there was a controversy, they were delving into popular media. Their um, arguments were not necessarily good on that. And I'll give you a little um, argument, a little taste of what uh, they were talking about about Bjorn Lomberg. This is from a site called LogicalScience.com. Um, Bjorn Lomberg presents his book. They're talking about the episode here. Lomberg is an associate professor of statistics at Denmark's University of Har Ar um, Ar um, his, his, uh, he's been widely criticized for his book, The Skeptical Environmentalist. Uh, Scientific American has published a 12-page uh, article entitled Misleading Math About the Earth, dedicated solely to debunking the Lombard book. The prestigious peer-reviewed journal uh, Nature also joined the battleground and described Lombard's work as employing the strategy of those who argue Jews weren't singled out by the Nazis. Um, basically Holocaust deniers. Grist Mill uh, didn't treat uh, Lombard uh, kindly, as they lined up a whole host of scientists, leading scientists to critique his work. And then, and National Academy of Science member uh, Norman Meyer says Lombard lacks a preliminary understanding of the science in question. Regardless of whether Lombard is, is right or not, Penn and Teller uh, may have done better uh, by choosing someone that is uh, a little more respected among mainstream scientists. More information about Lombard can be provided here. Um, I will be providing the link to this, uh, to the particular site, um, which has links to the Scientific American and other peer-reviewed uh, journals and the like. Um, they also talk about um, uh, other peer-reviewed literature from, uh, you know, NASA 2000, according to NASA 2005 was the hottest year. Um, the Cato Institute um, completely ignored the hockey stick graph and other points. And yes, I know some people have said that there's like, you know, corrected uh, graphs from the hockey stick, but even taking that into account, even the graphs which are corrected from the hockey stick, there's still a dramatic rise in the last hundred years compared to what was going on for the last thousand or forty-five thousand years from the putt from the uh, Vostok ice core caps or from, you know, from uh, the satellite photos that we've been, you know, the satellite photos, the uh, temperature recordings, and hell, even the best data takes into account the supposed urban island heat effect. Again, I've provided a great number of sources on this point. Um, let's see, what else do they talk about here? Oh, yes, um, they talked about predicting an ice age. Um, the Skeptical Inquirer article, which I uh, mentioned, not only did they never predict a cooling, uh, an ice age, but the Skeptical Inquirer article, uh, Global Warming, a look, um, uh, trigger, uh, Global cl Climate Change Triggered by Global Warming Part 2, um, the other article listed from the Skeptical Inquirer also references peer-reviewed literature happening since then, where they've evaluated that um, CFCs uh, may actually, if they can find similar chemicals that could work for it, um, there was a, a slight cooling trend in the 1980s, but apparently um, CFCs in the atmosphere do in fact reduce a certain amount of, um, you know, do in fact reduce a, certain, reduce a certain amount of the heating effect. And this could be beneficial in trying to confront global warming. Downside, of course, is those that, um, this did contribute to the ozone hole, which, as you know, um, was back concerns during the 1970s and the 80s. So then we stopped it. The, the you know the CFCs and the like started depleting themselves. You know started you know using themselves up in the atmosphere, and the ozone hole started to heal itself. Now we're back on a warming trend again, based on the already existing CO2 in the atmosphere that we're still putting up there. We're still super saturating the system. I've already explained this before, um, and there's plenty of experts, um, you know, both from NASA and from other spots where you know the you know both in physics and in chemistry which are talking about this. Geology is not the only area. I mean, if you're looking at ice cores, you know, the CO2 levels and the, 
temperature levels can prove this. I mean, like the, you know, like we've got you know we've got we've got layers of stuff. Like there's more than enough evidence to be able to take a look at this. Like you know, I've I've referenced to more than other sites. You can take a look at. You can take a look at the IPCC reports. You can look at the peer-reviewed literature in science and nature in other areas. I mean, like, there's more than enough evidence to look at this. Um, they're also saying um, we're not sure yet. Again, IPCC most of that's been dealt with. Um, but here's one that uh, caught my eye. Patrick Moore, an ecologist, said best than uh, best science tells us that less than one percent of species will go uh, um, uh, fr uh, will will go less than um, uh, let's see here uh, will go less than uh, less than one percent of species will go extinct in the next hundred years. Um, unfortunately, uh, a peer-reviewed uh, paper from Nature uh, talked about extreme uh, extinction risk from climate change. A significant percent of our species could be uh, dead out by uh, 2050. Uh, CO2 excess increase in the oceans turn into carbonic acid. Um, for those of you who will be interested, um, CO2 is, ca is catalyzed by the oceans, um, which would normally be H2O. Uh, now what would happen is that um, this uh, H2O uh, would then bond with carbon dioxide to form H3C3O+, which is highly acidic, and what this would do is that this would, um, since the water would be altered, um, the, the acidity would, you know, the oceans would become more acidic, it would become too acidic for shellfish and certain other species there to be able to handle, thus they would all die off. Um, you know, this is pure basic science here. Um, they've got, uh, you know, um, Discovery Channel's Global Warming, What You Need to Know by Tom Rocha, and, um, you know, extension of 50% of our species by, uh, you know, due to ocean acidification, other mechanisms, um, the World Wildlife Fund, I mean, like, you know, they tried to, um, you know, they, they tried to say that the World Wildlife Fund is wrong or what have you, but, um, you know, the peer-reviewed literature is quite clear on this one, proceeds in the National Academy of Sciences, um, you know, um, impact of acidification, I mean, um, what about land species that get killed off due to the rising rates of, uh, uh, of you know, of sea levels? I mean, I've already explained all this in the terms of the physical processes slash chemical processes that go along with this. I mean, this is blatant science here, you know, and I find it interesting that the uh, Committee for Concerned Scientists, the IPCC, the, um, you know, peer-reviewed literature that was coming out at NASA, none of these people were interviewed uh, by Penn and Teller during this. Only uh, a representative of the Cato Institute and Bjorn Lombard were interviewed. Um, in terms of scientists, and the only people who were interviewed for the environmental side was the chosen spokesperson of the uh, Rainforest Action Committee. Well, perhaps that environmental, perhaps they're half right. Perhaps the environmentalist groups don't necessarily know what they're talking about. On the other hand, there is a great amount of peer-reviewed literature which is confirming what the environmentalists are saying, but the environmentalists may not necessarily be fully informed on that science. But then again, neither do apparently do the do the um, libertarian uh, movement. Are they uh, fully informed either? So I would appreciate, you know, again, this does seem highly biased, and I would consider it, uh, of skeptics in their point, I would consider it one of the biggest blunders um, that the uh, that the skeptical, um, well, at least that the skeptical show uh, Penn and Teller bullshit has done. It's one of their biggest blunders, and, you know, they, and the, the only reason I'm not mentioning this, the only reason I'm mentioning this now is because um, I haven't seen any updates uh, since the time that that uh, show was done, um, you know, there was further information presented on secondhand smoking, and they proposed an amendment to it. But nothing's been done about environmentalism or anything like that. And uh, there's further info now. And Penn and Teller haven't said anything on environmentalism since that 2003 episode. So, you know, and South Park's continuing it by saying environmentalists are irrational. They don't respond to logic. You know, it's a it's an ad hominem. It's a you know it's a scary ad hominem. And you know, um, I mean, like I even caught uh, at least one ad hominem and. and a couple of straw man attacks and ignoring scientific research in this episode. You know, I've seen this happen before too with the ESP episode where they talked about scientific research and parapsychology. You know, um, I agree about, you know, skepticism of the existence of ESP, but, you know, if their argument style is not up to the best, I mean, you know, you're going to get blunders like this one, you know, where, where perfectly legitimate science is going to get ignored because, um, because of the fact that they've been right in a few other areas. People are going to assume like, you know, it's like perfectly okay, or they say like, don't trust us, think for yourselves. Well, I actually watched that episode, and they didn't say anything in there about don't trust us, think for yourselves. Um, that reference came off a, um, came off a criticism from, uh, uh, what was the site? Um, let me see here. Ah, here we go. Um, source watch. Uh, talk, pen, and tell our bullshit, source watch. Um, so, like I said, I don't, uh, um, like I said, I honestly don't know what they're talking about, but um, I'm going to provide the links to this particular site on uh, logicalscience.com. Um, you know, I, I really don't think the... Uh, you know, I mean, like, there's 